Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love. This is our Saturday service, our weekly service. And I want you to hear what happened this week. I know you saw the last video that I uploaded. Well, I also added Davina's video to my playlist so you could see them played back to back. She nor I knew that God was leading us to do what we did. And the thing that got me the most, though, is when Davina was sitting in her car and she used the example of having your hands full of stuff. This is where our messages really came together. When her hands were full of stuff and, and you're trying to get something from God, but you're too full of your own stuff to be able to receive from God. And right. she was dealing with old baggage and old stuff and trying to take on what God had when you're already loaded up. It's just like it, God showed me a visual, like of like us in, in my the way He showed it to me was someone holding a bunch of boxes, you know. Like we're holding boxes and even like sometimes some boxes are bigger than others and like we keep asking and like crying out to God and and um it's hard for us, we can't receive anything if our hands are free. So that's why like when you drop it and you surrender, you surrender to God, your hands you're put you're preparing your hands and your heart to receive what God has. But when you there's things in your hands, you can't receive those things. So some some of those things are sin, some of those things are bitterness or unforgiveness mm -hmm. or whatever i mean every person's whatever is in their hands is different and sometimes like we're like well we let it go i let that go i prayed about it i asked god to take that but how many times do you pick it back up when you go into a situation and you're like hmm like do you see that person and then you still feel like hmm you want to say something or you feel like it's still there doesn't mean you have to pick it back up that's, that's what the enemy's trying to get you to do, but you're like, you know what? No, I gave that to the Lord. He said, I'm healed and I'm healed. And I forgave them. So, you know what, Lord, take these feelings of bitterness away. I gave it to you, you know? And, and um, that's what it was. So sometimes we do give things to God. Sometimes we do put those down, but we pick them back up again. Mm -hmm. And and when our hands are full with those things, whether it's some things like, like the other thing that he showed me is we don't want to give up some things like, Maybe the Lord has already dealt with you, like you need to let that relationship go, you need to let that friendship go, you need to let that job go, or whatever it is, and we're like, oh, well, I don't want to let it go just yet, for whatever reason. Some people want it because they enjoy it. Some people don't want to because they're scared that if they do let go of that relationship, or if they do let go of that job, that they're not going to... Um, they're not going to be okay. Like something's going to go wrong and they're, they're kind of not sure and fully trusting in the Lord. But if God says, let it go, we got to let it go and trust that God is going to take care of you. If God tells you to let something go, that's a oh, weight that's pulling you down. Then you're going to, you're going to end up sinking if you don't let go. And that's what a lot of us do. Sometimes we're sinking and being held down by these burdens. But when we surrender to God, like when, you know, you put your hands up um, and it's not just a sign of surrender, but your arms are open, like wide open to just tap and receive everything that God has to give down to you. But they have to be empty. They have to be lifted in surrender to fully get what God has for you. Because a lot of times what God has for us is greater than what we want for ourselves. You know, we just tip the surface and God has more abundantly for us. So that was one of the things that um, it was. And sometimes um, like the end of following up with that letting go of stuff, I know it felt like there's some of us, like, I feel like God really wants people, they, they know that they're holding on to something and they have a deliverance and they're asking for deliverance, but they don't want to let go of something. And that's where that raccoon trap came in. He showed me like, you stick your hand in there. It's like shiny, like raccoons like shiny. So you stick your hand in there and it's nothing, there's nothing part of the trap. The only thing that is the trap is the raccoon not wanting to let go of that shiny thing, you know? So your deliverance is already there if you would just let go of whatever God's telling you to let go of or whatever you know you need to let go of is what it was. Right, right, right. Now, let me share this real quick. When she did it, because you can't see her right now. So when she did it, um, she held her hand up and here's the raccoon's paw in the track. Now, what he's got in his hand, let's do this glass. Uh, let me see. I want to do something else that I don't have to worry about dropping and spilling because I got something in there. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's do this This cup, for example. Now, this cup makes my fingers expand, right? 
So if the trap is just big enough for the pore to come through, it's going to be locked because the pore is holding on to the item it reached in for. And what we do emotionally is we steadily are reaching back in to the devil's trap. Look at this. So that we can play with our bitterness. We can play with our unforgiveness. We can rehearse all the bad things done. And we want to hold on to that because we have a right. It hurt us. So when we try to pull, come out of the devil's trap, we can't come out because we're locked in. Why are we locked in? Because we're holding on to this thing. Once we let go of it, then our hand can slip out and we're free. All right. I love that example she showed. And I had to show it physically so you would see the example of why a lot of us get locked in to the devil's traps. We give place to the devil in so many areas in our lives because we are still holding on to his poison. We're holding on to his tools. We're holding on to his toys. Hello. And his toys are not something to play with. All right. Now, thank you very much, Davina, for sharing that. I love that example. Now, we're going to move on, and we are going to read the, the word of God, and I'm going to mute the mics so that all the little feedback and all of that stops. All right. All participants are muted, and they can unmute themselves. All right. Now, we are going to go to Psalms 30. Father, anoint this heavily in Jesus' name. Lead and guide. All right. Starting at verse 1. I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, Thou brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning now let me show share this with you when the moon is in the sky and the sky is dark all right that's all the light you're going to get depending on how much of the moon is reflecting the, the light from the sun but when it's time for the sun to take dominance and bring daylight then what happens is the moon has to go away and go elsewhere so that the sun can rule by day. And there are a lot of times when you are looking at your night, you forget to remove your night. You can willfully remove your night on the inner man when you take your night and give it to God. When you take that moon and give it to God, when you take the troubles that occur at night, the crisis, the trials, the hurts, the open runny wounds, the bitter memories, when you take all of the discouragements and give them to God, then the sun, S-O-N, can rule by day. And you're not groping through your light in the darkness. God did not create you to live without light. God did not create you to live in the dark. All right, let's move on. Verse five, for his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, a night, a night. Okay, but joy cometh in the morning. And in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Lord, by thy favor, 
Thou has made my mountain to stand strong. Thou didst hide thy face and I was troubled. I cried unto thee, O Lord, unto the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my blood when I go down into the pit? Shall the dust praise thee? Shall it declare thy truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness to the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. You know, you can choose how this story ends up in your life. In every situation, every, per every circumstance, every problem, every episode of your life, you can choose how this story turns out. You can let the night prevail or God prevail. Even in the beginning, where the earth had no form, nothing but darkness, darkness was on the face of the deep. God said, let there be light. And there was light. All right. And they became two separate entities. Isn't that something? The darkness he called night, the light he called day. So you can choose if you want to live in the daylight or if you want to live in a pit in the dark. You can choose. You can let the devil lay out your whole scenario if you want to. You can let the devil designate this is how you're going to live. This is your lot in life. This is all you get. All you get, buddy. You don't deserve anymore. I'm going to fix your business. I'm going to keep you in your place. Well, see, nobody knows your place but God. The devil will make you think he knows your place. The devil will tell you a lie and tell you what your place is. But if you want to live in God, you live in his light. You let God be the one to tell you what's up, who's who, and what's what. All right. Now you need to get your hand out of that trap and quit going for the okie doke. Because anytime you reach in to your old open runny wounds and you're in there trying to uh, rehandle and replay with your scars and you're ready to go back in and re-examine you're going to re-examine the the problem now see here that you, you you see that word promise well that was a broken promise my father wasn't there for me my mother never did what she said she was going to be see and i can tell you every detail I can tell you every letter of every detail because it's just as if it happened yesterday. God did not create you to live that way. You cannot live your life or drive down the road focused on the rearview mirror. You can't do it. Can't do it. You'll crash every time. So when you're sitting there concentrating on all of your wounds and, and re-examining. I remember when I was four years old and so-and-so said so-and-so to me. I'll never forget that. I remember from that day on, I never wanted to do this anymore. I never thought of myself as anything anymore. And I just went down the pit. That just ruined my life. Really? You have a God, but you let this little thing, when you got the God of the universe who can change everything inside of you, you rather focus in on this. And where is this sitting, by the way? It's sitting in Satan's little trap. Satan's little trap laying there waiting for you. Laying in wait. So you can get your hand when you're ready to rehearse, when you're ready to play another one of your reruns that I talked about in the other video, 
rerun, rerun, rerun. You go right back in that same thing, put your little paw and grab a hole. Now you're in the trap and you're there. And you're going to be locked there for a while on lockdown. Why? Because you have concentrated on this so much, you forgot you were sticking your hand in the devil's trap to get your hand back on it. So now while you're examining and rehearsing and you're tired of it, now you want to be healed. Lord, I'm tired of hurting from that. I'm tired. I'm tired of that having control over my life. I'm tired. But your hand is still on it. See. When God heals, there's usually a twofold thing going on. Number one, God is willing that you be healed. Number two, you must ask him to heal you. All right. That is the initiation. Then when we get to getting the switch on, number one, God has to do something. Number two, you have to do something. When he, when he told the guy to get healed from, when the, the, the guy wanted to be healed from leprosy, all right, the question, the answer was there. Now, here comes the instruction. Go dip seven times. But all you got to do is say the word. But no, you have to do something. You have to pursue your healing. Go dip. So, now the man's got to go somewhere, inconvenience himself, and travel somewhere to go dip seven times in a place that's not dignified, that's not equal to his image. He has to humble himself. Now, many of you, you have to humble yourself and you have to say, you know what? I have gone around this mountain long enough. I have played with the devil's toys long enough out of here. I'm sick of it. I'm done. No more. No more you, Satan. No more my scars. No more my hurts. Now, it may take years to get healed, but I tell you what, I'm letting go right now, and I'm not going to pick that crap back up. Why? Because I am giving it to God. I'm releasing it to God. No more. I'm done. I'm done. Kapui, I'm done. The only way I'm going to stay clear is to stop handling it. If you want your hands to get clean, this is a piece of jewelry, I know, but let's make believe, let me turn it inside out. Okay, let's turn it on the dull side. Let's make believe this is something dirty because a lot of our memories and our scars and all that are based on something dirty. Think about it. So here you are, you're handling it. As long as you handle the scar, as long as you manipulate and massage that memory, that memory, oh, and then when they did that, and then when they did this, and I remember how it affected me, and boy, when it affected me, and see, that's why I get so angry right now. As long as you're handling it, your hands never get clean. This is the dirt. You wash your hands. You get all, all blessed in the Lord. And then you come back and before you know it, you're back on that again. You've picked it back up and you're handling and you're handling. Well, guess what? You're getting contaminated again. What are you getting contaminated with? Bitterness. A resurfacing of emotional pain. What ends up happening? You start gaining weight. The more dirt you get on you, the more weight you gain. Because this is not a normal weight gain of eating fat foods. This is a weight gain of carrying those weights on your back, that monkey on your back, that big old knapsack where the Bible says uh, to get rid of every weight and every sin that so easily besets you and run with patience the race set before you. Well, when you're running a race, you got to shed all the dead weight. Because if you carry the dead weight, you're going to tire before you get to the finish line. And many of you tire before you get to your finish line. And what you do with your tiredness is you let go of God rather than letting go of the baggage, the baggage, the baggage that's weighing you down, the baggage that's tripping you up, 
the baggage that's screwing your head on backwards, the baggage that's causing you to crash because you're focused in the rearview mirror on the baggage. The baggage. You do not want to be a spiritual bag lady. You do not want to be a spiritual bag man. Trust me. You don't need all that on you. God says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Oh, how can you get rest when you got to carry a load everywhere you go? You're carrying the molestation. You're carrying the lie that they told on you. You're carrying the abuse. You're carrying the abandonment issues. You're carrying your rejection. You're carrying the mockery and all the times they made fun of you and all the things they said when they made fun of you. You know it by heart like a script. Now, when you got all that on you, you're dysfunctioning. You're malfunctioning. You're coming out of sorts. You can't do anything effectively. You can't do anything to your maximum potential because half of you is burdened down or even more than half is loaded down with the cares of the baggage. The baggage. That is your worst enemy, your baggage. And you won't let it go and give it to God like he said to. That's the only way you'll enter into his rest is to lay down the baggage. My help, all of my help cometh from the Lord. Nobody can help you with that baggage but God. Everybody else can try to help you carry it. Everybody else could try to uh, uh, put ointment on the sore spots for carrying that baggage for so long. Only God can take the baggage off your back and get rid of it and make it non-existent. But he'll take it piece by piece because he knows that you have to go through healing. You have to go through uh, an accountability of what happened. You have to you, you, you have to, oh boy, he has to process you through your healing. And st he's steadily taking things off of you. Part of that is called deliverance. But in that deliverance, when you get ready for your mind to go back there, no, 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 I rebuke those thoughts in the name of Jesus. Lord, you delivered me from it. I'm not going back to it. If there's any residual, any crumbs, get it out, get it out at the root, get it out, get it out, get it out. You take it, Lord, you take it. Too heavy for me. Too heavy for me. Can't take it. I'm tired of that controlling every aspect of my life, of my fiber, of my being. I'm tired of it. And it's only when you get tired of being abused by your baggage Will you get free? Because some of you, some of you like to pet. You like to pet your wounds. You like to massage your hurts. You feel like your hurts can relate to you and you can relate to them. And when God says, come on, let me take that. No, wait, 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 I'm not ready yet. I still want to remember how wrong they did me. I still want to, you remember when they said so and so, that wasn't right. I don't like the way that went down. I don't know if I'll ever get over it. Well, some things you have to be willing. You may not be able, but be willing to get over it, step over it. Leave it behind you. And like God instructed the people of Israel, don't, I mean, uh, Lot and his family. When you come out of that mess, don't you dare look back.
So knowing that God has your destiny ahead of you, God says, I will go ahead of you and make the crooked places straight and the rough places smooth. The Bible calls it plain. That means smooth. He'll smooth out the rough edges. He'll smooth out the road ahead of you. But guess what? You're not going to enjoy that benefit if you're still pulling the load behind. You ever see a car? I, we used to come up to uh, Hanford. We go to Hanford camp meetings. Church of God Hanford camp meeting. And it was shocking to see how many cars would be on the side of the road cooling off. They overheated because they had to go up through the grapevine. And you're going through the grapevine. And here's, here's the, the deal. The cars carrying the biggest loads, pulling a trailer, pulling something behind it, towing a car. They're the ones that have to pull over to the side and cool off. Why? It overheated. Why did it overheat? Too much load for too steep of a hill, for too long of a drive. Many of you overheat all throughout your lives. You overheat, you knock somebody on the can, you, 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 you quit a job that was a blessing from God through, out of the heat of passion, an emotional outburst. You overheat it because of all the baggage that's still with you on your job. Your marriage fails, all the baggage because of what you brought into your marriage, what they brought into their marriage. And now you got two people hoarding their baggage, will not let go of it. And they're bringing the old into the new and the new rots. It rots away, it decays because of emotional baggage. Not because of each other, because of emotional baggage. Baggage will ruin more things than you can imagine because you have given it a place in your life and you think it owns the right to remain in your life. And all it is there to do is destroy, distract, and disintegrate you. You must get rid of the baggage. And what you cannot get rid of, God can. Ask me how I know. I was one damaged. Ooh, you talk about damaged goods. Oh, that was me. And I'm not going to talk about me right now. I'm going to talk about how thorough God's healing is. All the emotional baggage I came up with, self-hatred, fear, insecurity, uh, self-consciousness, stuttering, uh, oh my goodness, rejection. Ah, I, I don't, I don't have a list long enough to go over. You don't, you know, you guys don't have the time, but my point is when I got saved and I sat down before God, I said, okay, here's my list as it rolled down across the room. Here's my list. Would you take all of this and heal me from it? That was the day it began. God still does healing. He does it all throughout your life, but you get a whole lot more healing in a whole lot shorter time when you start giving it to him from day one. The sooner you give it, the sooner the healings begin. The sooner the healings begin, the sooner you experience freedom, true freedom, true wholeness. Mm. It's a beautiful thing to be free. He whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Do you want to be free? Now, now, you can be like a lot of abused spouses who stay with their abuser because they think there's nowhere else they can turn. And people will say, come stay with me. I'll set you up an apartment. Come stay at this shelter. Go to that shelter. Why do they not go? Because they have bought in to the lie that their abuser has told them down through the years, 
that you cannot live without me. Pow! You cannot be without me. Bam! I mean, but you need me. Slap! And they stay. Just like the Venus said in her message on her video, you tie a little something to a, an elephant when they're young and they can't get loose. When they get big and they're loose enough to tear your whole ground up, you tie a little string and they won't even try to break loose because they're on lockdown in their brain. God can deliver you from that lockdown. God can deliver you. Do you want to be free? Or are you afraid of freedom? You ever have a, um, oh, this is, yeah, check this out. This just popped in my head, so I know God wants me to use it. You ever have a hangover? Partying all night, amongst other things. <clears throat> yeah. And you wake up, somebody comes in your room. Beautiful day outside, sun shining out, just gorgeous, wonderful, right? And you're sitting up there in the bed, dead asleep, pounding headache, feeling lousy, all the residual effects of the night before when you thought you were having fun. All righty now. So sun is shining bright, beautiful, curtains open. And, and I did this on another video. The Lord just brought this to my mind. This is how you respond to the light, to freedom, to wholeness, to healing. Someone, turn close that. Where you got that open? Stop it. Now I got a split in the head. Uh -uh. Close that. I, need it to, I don't need no light right now. And you live your lives like that. I don't need no light. Don't tell me about Jesus. Don't tell no, I don't, I don't need a, I'll be getting on my case. I don't want to hear it. Don't tell me I should leave that man, that man or that woman that's beating my behind every other week. I know. Just, just leave. Let me handle this. Woo! Help me, Lord. <laughs> anyway, let me not get frustrated as I talk about this situation here so we end up getting caught up in these trick bags and we get locked down psychologically locked down emotionally we're caught up in these things because we won't let go you let go of it guess what oh oh i'm free that was simple wasn't it all i had to do was let it go just Drop it. Mm. Mm. Seems too easy, doesn't it? Seems too much like right, doesn't it? You think on that, and you go to God and ask him to help you get a mind change, give you a pendulum shift in your psyche so that you can pursue your freedom with a vengeance. The freedom God gave you, your God-given right to be free. All right, and I say be free in the name of Jesus from all your hurts, from all the past, from all your baggage, from all the weights that so easily beset you. God bless you.